Hey you folks, Quilly Dean here, and welcome back to our Let's Play of Civilization V, A Brave New World as Venice, and taking a look at the demographic screen. Uh, overall, population, third overall, con considering we only have the one city versus potentially two, or even the maybe possible, but pretty unlikely that the AI, AI is three at this point. Um, we're doing okay there. The best is quite a bit taller. Now, the problem is that these population numbers, they don't they don't math out to anything specific. So we have, you know, 150,000 people, but our population is six. So you can't really map one to the other. I'm trying to remember how to get to the demographic screen without hitting F9 again, which would stop my recording. Uh, so crop yield, I mean, you know, overall, we don't have a lot of soldiers. And really, that's the number we want to look at. And not only because... Um, you know, this is indicative of our actual forces, but this is also the number the AI uses to determine if they can bully us or not. So there are certainly some people out there who might be mostly Catherine right now, who's a little bit dangerous. Although, again, we're mostly worried about uh, Pocoteo over here. So I'm actually... Do we have stats for him? Well, that's the problem. We can't see the full chart over here. He has the most land, but that's not really surprising uh, at all. Um, yeah, so a big question mark is exactly how many troopers does he have. And we probably want to look at that. Now, of course, we ended the last video with completing the mausoleum of Nijimina. And so that was good. Now these places are making a lot of extra money. So um, if we want the Great Library, and frankly, I'm not even sure that we can get it at this point. But if we are going to get it, we really have to dive right in. So we're going to have to take the chance that we're not going to be rushed. Because otherwise, we really, really, really would like an archer or two. But we're, you know... What the hell, man? This is this is what everything has been about, is this insane rush for a double World Wonder before Archer build, which, I don't know. I don't know. That is just madness. You, I shouldn't do it, but what the hell. I'm probably going to not finish the library, and then I'm going to be attacked and die anyway. So that'll be. this will be a really short Let's Play. I'll go to bed early tonight. Uh, bronze working is finished. Do we have... I, Wow. And there's more. Wow. Lots up here. Now, of course, we can't claim it, but it's nice that it hasn't been claimed yet. There is some iron over here, though, which is unfortunate because it doesn't mean that our nearby neighbor is certainly a threat. Uh, that being said, what's kind of interesting here is we will be able to, as soon as we finish creating our little pasture, we will be able to hook up the iron, uh, which will be pretty good production. Um, so uh, that won't be too bad. Uh, over here, you know, we're really, really close to the place where we can just automate this guy again. I mean, I know it didn't work out so well. Yes, friendship. Friendship, all the things. We are going to play... This is actually going to be a relatively... Well, I say this. My my intention is probably to play a relatively unmilitaristic game. Um, because every time we go to war, we're just going to lose a crap ton of trade caravans. And we don't want that. We want to have the money and the culture and the tourism. We don't want to be at war, at least not after a certain point. There may be an early war over here because it's a little close for comfort. We're, we're going to have to play it by ear. Of course, we're going to be behind on our troops for quite some time. Uh, Belgrade or Grad wants to target the nearby encampment, which is uh, right over here. And I don't think we're going to be able to help with that. Yeah, we're not going to be friends anymore, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. Oh, you know what? Go ahead and automate. You're, you're going to be fine. What could possibly go wrong? Um, next turn. So we still have the production focus, which is good. I mean, I could manually massage the things to get the rate, but, you know, at a certain point, there's only so much min-maxing I'm willing to really invest here. Um, yeah, great works of art, so we're going to look at those soon enough, once they start happening. It's kind of an interesting mechanic. Uh, a little, a little fiddly. If you guys have been playing with it, and you've been playing with trying to create, like, the themed sets of works of art, uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just wait. Hey, shiny things. Uh, you, you'll, you'll see what it is, but it feels like there's a lot of fiddliness. And actually, just looking for the archaeological sites feels very awkward and tedious to me. So, um, wait, what? Oh, I was going to say, we finished the Great Library already? No, we didn't. Okay, so we got, we got crushed on our way to the Great Library, which is really unfortunate because I really want the Colossus, and that would have helped us get the Colossus. So... Do I want to pick up another wonder? I don't know how much process progress anyone has put into these. Probably I will just lose the race to these as well. So that is unfortunate. Um, I definitely want a library for tech. And you know what? I will go ahead and build the library, and then we will go ahead and put out two archers. Library is not as much of a big time investment. Uh, we should be able to react just fine if something should happen. Although, you know, I say that. Let's... Okay, we've we've done enough. Let's remove the queue. We've done enough craziness at this point. Let's build an archer. 
we will feel much better at that point after which we will go ahead and uh, wow, we really lost a lot of position there to Catherine uh, after that we will go ahead and build the library it is really unfortunate but what the hell we're not gonna be tech based we're just gonna make the money probably I, I, there's no probably I should have gone straight for the library I should have skipped the uh, mausoleum Ma AI doesn't make the mausoleum a priority I should have gone even, frankly, I was going to say, you know, gone masonry, then into writing, then start on the library. And I would have done it, maybe, barely, even then. It's almost like you got to go straight for writing and then build the library, which is normally what I do. You know, I'm trying, like, different and exciting things, but not necessarily smart things. All right, let's go get that hooked up. At least we have some iron. It's only, it's only a two-stack, which is unfortunate. What does this guy have? Only a two-stack as well. We might be able to overpower him taking over Team Yuck. Timok. And there's citrus, which will be nice. Stone, uh, Cotton, which will be nice. Cuts off the top. Now, people are going to be able to get around just fine, but it is going to be a nice, secure line. I wouldn't mind that terribly. Working our way up to sailing. Actually, now that we've got the archer, we could go and build one workboat, but I don't think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to go right into the library. We've got embark powers, although we should find our scout and actually bring him home because he has to walk into friendly territory to gain the power to embark. Uh, oh wait, that's after optics, never mind. But th what I'm saying is still true, I'm just, it's optics that does it. Um, one archer's not bad, we could go ahead and scout with this guy, but no, I think I'm gonna, you know, keep that sort of safety net up. I'm really worried about our neighbor here pulling something out of his butt. Um, what I could do is do something like that and like that. It might get him stressy. And he might ask us about our troops, but uh, we'll deal with that if that happens. We'll tell him, no, no, we're not declaring war. Yet. We really could, actually. It's almost like... No, I need the library. I can't delay the library anymore. Good God, our tech is suffering enough. Could go library, barracks, two swordmen, and go on the assault. Probably add another archer at least, though. But that's that's a definite possibility. I mean, again, I was, I'm talking about overall peace, but one city... One city we want... We still don't have a really good candidate for our city-state claiming. I mean, at this point, we'll probably just grab Hanoi because it's close. And that works. But uh, Did I put you back on? Yeah, default focus. Good. <laughs> I did call the fact that we weren't going to get the library. I mean, it's just... It's just the way it is. If you don't rush directly, especially for the big, important wonders. Uh, the Oracle's pretty big, too, and maybe we want the Oracle. I don't know. Um, I do want the ga Hanging Gardens. Now, the Hanging Gardens will be less of a risk because only the people who took Tradition will be able to fight for it, and it's not as high priority for the AI. But understandably, I mean, why would they make it a high priority? It's not as important as other things. All right, we've got that hooked up, which is good and lovely. Um, and what I will probably do is swing myself down here to put a mine down, and then I will just automate it at that point. Because I, I consider the mine to be a little higher priority. Again, you know, maybe growth, this, that. Uh, we, we do need calendar at some point. I don't think we've got it yet, right? Oh, no, we do! Right, we teched it for free. Cool. Choose production. I believe... Oh, we need to set up some trade routes. It, yeah, I think it's time for that. And, um, you know, we, we can really build a trade route down to Moscow and be totally safe with the caravan. The cargo ship, I'm not as sure about because there could be some pirate ships at this point. But, yeah, let's... Um, Let's get the money rolling in. I'm feeling secure-ish. We should be okay. I've got money in the bank. Um, it might... Oh, see, I'm, sa I'm saying money in the bank to defend myself with, but frankly, a second worker right now would be pretty damn sweet because we've got one, two, three, four improved tiles. Population seven and growing. Um, and as soon as Optics finishes, we're going to have a second place to improve. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, purchase that. Let's go ahead and get that second worker going on right now. Um, I mean, there's many things that I could have purchased that would be completely awesome to do. But I think that's going to be okay. And you, I'm just going to automate. Because that's going to be totally fine. You, I'm going to force a mine out there, and then I'll automate you after that. And then we'll more or less forget about the workers. Again, you know, you can get slightly more optimal stuff if you micromanage the workers, but there's only so much I'm willing to do that. I think we still need to research the... Uh, um, the camp technology. Lord Enrico and Dandolo. It's not as good as being a Contarini, but at least it's not a Faliero who's in charge of freaking Venice in this game. That would be really upsetting. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to watch my Crusader Kings 2 videos where I play as Venice. Because that is super awesome. 
So the Great Lighthouse is interesting. Um, the Lighthouse in general will actually be pretty good for us because the uh, plus one food from at least, we're going to work at least two ocean tiles, right, for our pearls. So that's an extra plus two food, which isn't bad. But it's also going to work out to an extra plus two production. And that's it. We don't have any actual fish. So a lighthouse is good in general. If you're going to build a lighthouse, is it worth spending twice as much in getting a great lighthouse? And then you get the extra movement and sight. It may or may not be. I'm not convinced the Great Lighthouse is a, a must build. We are going to get plus 45 to the production though. So really it's only going to be like, I don't know, let's fake math it and say it's going to be maybe like spending 1.5 lighthouses? Because that's 150 would be 2. Something like that. Um, and then it might be worth the extra benefit for the wonder. Plus, of course, it gives you a little bit of extra culture. Now, they're not the important culture things. Yay, classical era. Um, most importantly, we have this. So, I'm not building a customs house. I absolutely want to do the buy city-state power. And, yeah, buying Hanoi, I think, is going to be our best bet. Just in terms of defensiveness. It's not necessarily the greatest... Um, city-state that was ever built. It's just a tribute, but it should be okay. I guess we'll go there. Actually, I think we can even do it from water if we wanted to. Hopefully there's no goddamn pirate ships around, because that would give me... That, that would make me rage quit. Just putting it out there, I would be a little bit upset. <laughs> Holding my breath. Come on. Yes, barbarian turn. Okay. Bum bum bum. Eh, right, and the caravan, which is going to be fine. So, I mean, if I didn't take over Hanoi, what I could do is actually just build a trade caravan to here as opposed to, you know, Moscow. But I think Moscow is going to be the right way to go. Um, I actually will even get some of their units, which is quite cool. So we're going to get a, um, a composite bowman, which won't be too shabby. It'll help our tech a tiny bit. Of course, we do have more territory to defend against. And we are potentially making ourselves a target of both Russia and um, the Shoshone. I don't like the lack of room to expand, but we are going to get, you know, the dyes are going to be pretty valuable. Um, horses won't hurt. Why not? The wheat's not bad. It's going to be half decent production. Is yeah, it's not it's not great, but I'm I'm feeling okay about it. So we're going to purchase that. We bought a city state now. It's a puppet, so we're not going to be able to build um, directly, but we're going to be um, we should be okay. And of course, we can spend money to purchase things from here. Uh, we can't buy tiles, that's the only thing, but we can buy uh, units and buildings because we are playing as Venice, and that's our superpower. Now, our happiness has gone down by one, but that will correct itself very briefly. We're going to get pearls hooked up. Uh, there is a plantation here already, so we are getting the dyes, so we're still negative despite the dyes, um, but we should be okay. So, our growth is going to be stunted just a tiny little bit, but we will resolve it very quickly. I'm not too worried. There we go. Caravan is done. Wheel is done. Um, Chariot Archer won't be too bad, actually. Watermill, not too shabby either. Choose production. So I am actually going to build a workboat right away because I want the happiness um, and, you know, more sort of improved tiles. We might go ahead and build them both. Um, of course, the more I do this, the more I'm delaying the possibility of getting a great lighthouse. But look at this. Lighthouse, six turns. Great lighthouse, 11 turns. Not bad. Um, you know what? Let, let's go ahead and just try to get it can't purchase the workboat and I won't be able to. I could always, I know I can't build them in Hanoi. I would like the, the workboats hooked up for the happiness. Gosh. You know what? If I'm building that, I, I can get trapping a little faster. And because, oh, am I wrong? No, this doesn't give happiness. It's just food. Brr. 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 You can't remove jungle though. Like, hello, you. Or you? Are you almost done? Okay, you're gonna finish building mine. You're gonna hook up. Oh, that's that's food as well. That's right. It's not happiness. I keep getting that wrong. Hmm. Hmm. If I'm gonna sink the points in the great lighthouse, I want to get it. And I think if I start building it now, I will get it. If I build the workboat first, I might be screwed. I guess we're gonna have to stunt our growth a tiny little bit and hope that it's okay. Grr. It's not great, but what the hell. All right, let's put ourselves in the city and fortify and just hang out there. Trade caravan. So, trade caravan. I cannot move it. You see? And there's no, like, like pathfinding thing if I do the right click. Instead, I got the buttons here. Um, I can change the home city. And that matters because the home city 
it determines your sort of general trade range, plus there's a possibility of a few benefits. For example, if I wanted to transfer production from Hanoi to Venice, uh, assuming I had the right buildings, I could do that if I was homed in Hanoi. But uh, as it is now, we will simply establish trade route. So we can go to Novgorod or we can go to Timok. And so there's two lines here. The top two is what I'm going to get. So I'm, and if I mouse over here, it explains it all. I'm going to get three gold per turn and two science per turn. Meanwhile, Novgorod, the Russians are going to get one gold per turn and two science per turn. So Timok is actually going to give my opponents slightly less science. So I guess that's probably better. I could also go to Tier, in which case I wouldn't be giving any gold or science to anyone. On the other hand, I wouldn't get any science at all. So I think it's better off to just do this. Now, if I do go to war with these guys, it's I'm going to lose my trade route. But I'm not, I'm not rushing into war. At this point, it's a very defensive stance. There's that possibility I'm thinking about maybe, you know, taking the city. But there's no reason to rush to that right away. We're going to be, we're going to be making tons of bank. And hopefully we'll be, you know, all happy and hunky-dory. And life will be good, right? We get another policy. And I think monarchy is going to be excellent time to grab right now because we'll get a little bit extra gold, which doesn't hurt, but a little bit less unhappiness, which is going to be quite nice. Um, now, hopefully, I can un unlock the medieval era because I'd like commerce just feels I'm playing Venice. I should unlock commerce as quickly as possible. That being said, if I am going for a cultural victory. But even then, this is mostly defensive culture. I mean, the faster build is good, too, but I mean, it's mostly straight up culture. Uh, great writers and artists and musicians much faster. Yeah, that's true. Um, I like this, though. Mercantilism. Mercantilism. Yet 25% cheaper for purchases, which is going to be humongous for us. Absolutely, absolutely humongous. More great merchants, too, because those are going to be quite handy. Uh, and, of course, we're going to have lots of land routes. Um, I think there's a similar one for ocean routes. Oh, right here, plus four gold from all your sea trade routes, which is obviously quite nice, but I don't think... Yeah, the mercantilism is just way, way, way too good. So yeah, I will go down commerce, because again, you know, it might not be the strongest, but thematically it will make the most sense. For now, though, we're going to take monarchy so that we can be King Quilatine of Venice, or, you know, Don Dalo, or whoever we are. Um... You there, uh, you can start on that, and frankly, I'll just automate you after you finish that, because that will be fine and peachy. We've got plenty of happiness now, so we can go back to growing, which is good. Hopefully, we'll finish the Great Lighthouse. In fact, if I am concerned, I suppose... Oh, production focus actually changes nothing here. I could manually sort of adjust and massage things, but no, we're going to leave it as is. And just go into the next turn. We'll play a handful more, and then we'll cut for another break. Just because I need to refresh my throat. I need some liquid. Just water this time. Uh, Civ 5 doesn't really lend itself well to a let's drunk. Um, and they're going to want to build some roads. Now the thing is... I think we're better off building harbors. Especially since we are going to be um, connected to like really random city-states all over the place. I really don't want the gold route. The pro or the, the road route. The problem is... Even if I build harbors, will they just auto-build roads? And I think they will, which will be really, really annoying. Although, it's important for military movement. There is something to be said about that. Um, yeah, it might not be time to automate these guys quite yet. How much does it cost to purchase? Uh, I have not unlocked harbors yet. Oh, compass. Okay, you know what? Yeah, I'll just automate them for now. That is going to be totally fine. They can go and build those roads. Um, yeah, that's okay, because we are going to want a trade route, and we're just going to have to suck it up. Uh, going down that one branch, we're going to get a 50% discount on all our roads anyway, so it's not going to kill us. In fact, we're going to be making tons of money, but of course, you know, you want to squeeze every last piece of gold-pressed latinum that you possibly can out of the game. So, I feel like I want to take a step back and kind of evaluate my position here. I suppose one of the things I can do is check the demographics log, and I'm sure I'm probably... I thought it was going to be number eight, but apparently I'm number seven. Um, Poland is actually the worst off in terms of soldiers. I think that's Poland. Um, Russia is quite strong. They might decide to get feisty over here, and I should really get a second unit over there as quickly as possible. I set up my trade route, so we are making a tiny little bit of money there. But of course, we can have up to four trade routes right now. So normally people would be able to have two. I can have four because I'm Venice, and I really should get that going as quickly as possible. 
finish that great lighthouse because you know that's cool and all. What you really want to do is get into the position where you can just like purchase more of the caravans, um, because then you're spending money to make money. Public decoration from Russia. Like, I'm far more concerned about Russia than these guys Even at this point. Trapping is good. Now, I believe Casimir, like, Casimir's just been behind. Because we did not do the uh, embassy thing yet, right? Um, I will give you an embassy in exchange for one gold per turn. Sounds good for me. And I have a friendship, I think, with Catherine. Well, I'm friendly, so that's good. Um, I don't suppose you want to... I don't want to trade that away, actually, now that I think about it. I don't have two of anything yet. I could afford to trade one. I could trade away my iron. Which sounds bad, but it's actually kind of tricky. Because, let's say I'm worried about these guys declaring war on me, right? You say, why would I ever trade them iron, which they could use to build swords? Well, oh, you'd have no money. Um, well, the, de the reason is, if they do declare war, they lose the iron, and then all their iron-based troops... Um, become sucky and crappy. On the other hand, I would also like to build swordmen. I'm a little far away from being able to actually have the time to do that, though. Um, it'd be nice if I could upgrade this to a composite bowman, but I don't actually have the technology. Also, it would be nice to own this particular tile. We're really going to go out to the ocean first? This is going to piss them off, but... Like, defensively, it would be so much stronger if I had that tile as opposed to them. I don't know how likely it is that they're going to pop that way. Like, are they more likely to fill in the blanks here? It's probably the, the sort of cheapest expansion for the auto culture expansion. So I'm hoping it's that. Although, if I ever want this tile, clearly I'm going to have to buy this one. Kind of a silly thing to spend money on, but... I, I'm gonna wait. Maybe we'll, we'll want to spend something else first, and that's okay. All the gold per turn deals ended, but that's all right. Let's move ahead. Mm -hmm. Panama City wants tier bullied. I don't think we're gonna do that. Casimir's up there. Next turn. Hang Gardens on the way. Yeah, and that's the thing. I'm like, I'm gonna want to build that next. I don't think I'm gonna have to rush into building that though. Um, I doubt there's going to be that much of a rush to it. So I think I'm going to be alright there. Because I really, I want to get three more trade routes out. Temple of Artemis. Okay, they built it, which is fine. I didn't want it. I'm perfectly happy with them spending the resources to do that. I'm going to go ahead and automate this guy at this point. They can work together to build that trade route. Or, rather, that just that connection. It's not a trade road. Having the road here will be quite nice for the mutual defense, though. Um, with the Embark, they might actually be able to shave a turn off even without the road, but I think the road will still be slightly faster. Okay, we're going to finish Mathematics, which is fine. And what do I need to get into the Medieval Era? Any one of those. Mathematics is the gate and key to the science. Which leads to some interesting questions. Now, I do have horses over here. I've got four horses. So getting the horseback riding skill might be good. I don't usually build a lot of those units. I mostly build infantry and archers. Um, the horsemen are actually pretty good at sort of like sneaking around, grabbing things, um, wrecking terrain, getting a flank off. Uh, picking up construction for the composite bowmen would do wonders for my defensive strength. Other than that, well, if we're going for the cultural win, getting some of this stuff early on may in fact be quite handy. Currency, of course, since we're playing as Venice. Sounds pretty damn right. Uh, Petra's not really going to be our thing. And there might be time for the Colossus. We do have iron. We could build a couple of swordmen. We're going to be in pretty good shape. The Colossus is obviously very, very strong for us. Uh, the Oracle is obviously very, very strong for us. Uh, I'm not going to build the Terracotta Army, I think. It is a nice way to get a few extra units um, for relatively cheap. But I don't think it's super high priority. Getting Colosseum at some point is always handy because we want to be able to grow some more. And that's true. Now we will get plus four happiness whenever we hook up the pearls. Which is going to last us a fair amount of time. Oh, the car caravansary? caravansary? I mean, 50% increase in range and extra gold connecting to trade routes. Uh, that is pretty gosh darn strong. Uh, and we could build a couple of horsemen. It's not necessarily terrible. 
Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of really, really, really viable options here. Um, I do have a wonder in the queue that I want to build, right? Yeah, I got the Hanging Gardens, which I'm probably going to build next. Now, again, I don't think it's super rushed. And I think the Colossus is better, although it's a little deeper, so I don't think the AI is going to go for it quite as fast. Uh, I think we're going to have to give up on the Oracle, because I suspect a lot of people are going to rush in that direction, and it's just not going to be an option for us if we want to get some of the other things. And I really do want to get the Colossus, because I think thematically it's very strong. And I definitely want to get the Hanging Garden, because I think the bonus to Gardens is going to be quite nice, and that will let Venice grow really, really big. So we're going to we're gonna ignore the, uh, the Oracles, even though it's a really good wonder, right? It's unquestionably fantastic. Um... I think I'm going to pick up horseback riding first because I do want to get up to the four trade routes and the caravansary will be very helpful uh, in maximizing that and then we'll probably pick up iron working and go into the Colossus and hopefully at that point we'll be making enough money that if something hits the fan we will be able to rush by some defensive units uh, pretty quickly. In fact, we're going to be mostly buying most of our military units. Hey, we finished the Great Lighthouse. Hooray, hurrah. I like to smile the most so our happiness is of course very low because our happiness is always very low and part of that is because I think the AI has slightly different mechanics for generating unhappiness and the one thing I want to check is just the um, the Parthenon pre-built great work of art oh, that is actually very interesting I mean at some point we're going to have to really like if we're going to go culture we're going to have to commit to it I think that the money early on is still the stronger direction. And I think the Hanging Gardens, that, that food is just is very, very worthwhile, so we're going to build it. I suppose if I really want to hit the medieval era, I could just go for the engineering at that point, but and get the additional trade route, which is certainly good. I don't care about building the Great Wall. It actually would be like semi handy to defend ourselves with but I don't really care about it that much. We'll be able to live without the composite bowmen, so yeah, I'll finish the horseback riding, which is what I'm studying now. I'll queue up the iron working, and then um, I guess we will pick up the poetry and drama, potentially to build the Parthenon, and then we'll just jump into theology to hit the medieval age, and we can't build the great mosque because we don't have piety. The grand temple, it'll be interesting. Yeah, some of these might be interesting if we do pop the religions. Um, the Hagia Sophia, mm, there's a possibility. That unlocks gardens, which we probably won't actually build ourselves. I mean, eventually we need all this, obviously. It's just a question of what's better short term. National College is really important. And yeah, most of these are gonna be pretty key for that cultural win, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. And we're gonna we're gonna start looking at culture. I'm not sure that it's the way to victory. <laughs> Last minute, we might decide to like sneak in a diplomatic win by like spending a ton of money on all the city states. We'll just have to see how it goes. Finished the Great Lighthouse, which is good. I do want to put out one work boat. Um, just keep our happiness positive and, well, actually, you know, never mind that. We're going to buy the work boat after we just continuously pump out lots of caravans. That's going to be fine. How much was the work boat again? Purchase. Workboat is 240. Oh, we're going to get, be able to buy it in two turns, so that's totally fine. So let's just go and do that. It's so the almighty golden dollar. That's the only thing that matters, right? Of course, if we buy that, that means we won't be able to rush by a defense. But at this point, like, composite bowmen in there, it's going to be hard for them to take us out, unless they've like learned catapults, which is certainly possible. Um, they're going to have... They're going to take a lot of damage taking us out. At we can move the army down. The real thing we got to be scared of is a simultaneous... Um, declaration from both Moscow and or rather Russia and the Shoshone which is entirely possible that they'll decide to dogpile on us in which case we're gonna have a really really bad day especially since that's gonna blow up our trade routes too Ugh, unpleasant mm -hmm. and one of the ways I can make the trade routes a little safer is I could take this next caravan move the home to Hanoi and then set up the trade route to Moscow from there. Because I don't know if the amount of money you make is based on the distance. I hadn't noticed that, actually. I think it's based... Mm, that's interesting. I wonder if the help has uh, info about that. Horseback riding is done. Um, hmm, game concepts? Um, okay. Trade. That's... Damn it. Trade routes, like, 
Do you really not have an entry on trade routes? God, the help on this is, is useless. Trade routes, two cities, different than them, gold each turn, some of the nation trade around and larger sum, dependent on the resource diversity and revenue of the city. Two cities, granary, they can ship things back and forth, limited time. Uh, at a glance, reading really fast, I don't see any reference to distance, and in my little playing around earlier, I did not notice. Um, wow, Stonehenge was late! Woo! Uh, it is a low priority wonder for the AI, though. Um, I did not notice them prioritizing. What am I trying to say? I did not notice a difference in the distance. It seems to be based entirely on the value of the two destinations. So um, we're going to purchase a workboat. And we're going to choose production, and we will continue to build caravans for now. Assuming that there's enough trade routes left. Eh, that's interesting. We're going to go to Novgorod. We're going to get more science per turn than they do, which is good. That actually means we're behind on science, which is bad. Um, and I suppose, yeah, we could even build a connection with Tyr after, which is worth quite a bit more. In fact, it's worth, yeah, it's worth more than the connection to Novgorod in terms of gold, but science is pretty damn val valuable, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We can build one more land-based caravan based on what we know, and then we're really going to have to build some ships and start exploring the sea to meet some neighbors, damn it, because, um, I mean, unless there's someone up here that we haven't discovered yet, which is entirely possible. Where's my scout? Did he die? Scout. Embarked. Where? Oh, you're there! <laughs> Good. Yes, please check out the north. I appreciate that greatly. Um, Tears looking for trade opportunities. They've heard of Morocco. Yes, well, we'll see what we can do about that. Dum -dum -dum. So, uh, oh, I, know, I forgot to set my timer for this part, so it's either going to be like way too short or way too long, but it feels like it's coming up time for a break now. Um, but let's go ahead, hook up the fish take a couple more turns, because, you know, one more turn, that's that's the way nature of the game. And it's annoying that we have to wait for the uh, um, animation to cancel itself before we can hit next turn. I thought they'd fix that. Hmm. I don't know, maybe it's different with the next turn thing. So yeah, the one more caravan, and this should be mostly safe. Uh, if we moved the caravan to Hanoi, it's possible that it could reach more stuff. Because uh, I think, was it Tyr that was on the list? If we move to Hanoi, we might be able to reach Belgrade. Uh, also, once we build the caravan uh, building, whatever, Sham Kara, Shamalama, Ding Dong, which I thought we'd unlocked already, um, I think that adds to my possible range, right? Plus 50% range. And that will also help us add more destinations. That'll be good. Because again, I do really want to hit the four, the four point here. So it's now 800 BC. It's amazing how we already know when Christ will be born. It's very convenient. Need more things to work like that. We're in third place overall. Catherine is certainly coming away with a pretty strong score here. Um, she did complete a few extra wonders, which might be part of what's going on. Hanoi demands some wine. And one more go. And then, yeah, between parts, I'm going to make sure to take a look. I tend to go pretty fast when I'm doing the recordings, just because I'm... Well, or not necessarily pretty fast, but there's a limit to how much attention I can pay to the game while also talking. So I suppose I could... I No, there's no suppose. I know I could play a much better game if I just shut up and just played, but that wouldn't be fun for me, and I don't think it would be fun for you. At least I hope that you wouldn't consider it fun. Um, I'm definitely going to build this first, because I don't think we're going to have much more in the way of within range for our caravans, as is. Plus, it's going to be a pretty good amount of money. Oh, wait, the Hanging Gardens! Ooh. That's a tough decision, actually. You know what? Let's get started on the Hanging Gardens right away. We don't want to lose out on anything more. Can establish tier... Ah! So we do have a couple more left, and yes, Moscow would be an excellent moneymaker. Let's definitely go for that. So I could even build the fourth caravan right away, but no, I'm going to go ahead and queue up the Hanging Gardens, and we will bring this part to a close. See you guys next time.